This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 is about rotating coordinate systems. The motivation for this lecture is the introduction to the apparent forces, which will be the Coriolis force and centrifugal force. If we return back to the basics of Newton's law, Newton's law assumed that we have an inertial coordinate system. That is, it's an absolute frame of reference, fixed in space. Velocity is the change in position of a particle or a parcel. It is a vector and can vary either by a change in magnitude or by direction. In weather and climate, we are not working in an inertial coordinate system. We are in a rotating coordinate system. We are standing on the surface of the Earth. The Earth is rotating and we are observing the weather as it moves around us. We are observing the atmosphere. We are observing the oceans in this rotating coordinate system. Therefore, we need an approach for non-inertial, non-absolute coordinate systems, and we are going to limit ourselves to a rotating coordinate system. I like this introduction that is based really on a mathematical approach. I find it simple, and for me it's intuitive. I know that others do not have the same intuition with this that I have. But the basic idea is that we're going to have a coordinate system x, y, and z, and we're going to have another coordinate system x prime, y prime, and z prime. And we're going to relate the one coordinate system x, y, and z, which we will actually assume to be an inertial coordinate system, to the other coordinate system through a set of arbitrary functions that says x prime is equal to ax as a function of time, times x, plus bx, a function of times, times y, plus cx, a function of time, times z. And we have similar expressions for the y prime and the z prime direction. We're going to set up a coordinate system that looks like this, where in the darker blue color we have our initial coordinate system x, y, and z, with z being the local vertical. And we are going to assume rotation around the same axis such that z prime is the same axis as z. And there is a rotation of the x prime and the y prime axis. Therefore, what we have is a rotation around the z-axis of x prime and y prime. So you can imagine this red axis rotating. If you were in a room and this ball here was, say, just hanging from a ceiling, hanging from a string on the ceiling, and you were standing on some sort of rotating table, it's easy to see that though that ball is stationary in the room as you move around, you would say have to turn to keep that ball in sight. And so you would start to turn at the rate of rotation of the coordinate system. Often the idea of frames of reference are introduced with the idea of two cars or two trains passing each other. You can imagine if you're going down a highway, many of us have been on long road trips at one time or another, and if you are looking at the trees outside the window, then they're going by very fast. But if you pass somebody else and you're just a couple of miles per hour different from them, you can you know, look at them and perhaps even see what they're reading or doing in their car as you pass because you're both moving and the speed or the velocity that is of interest is the difference between those two. If we look at the particular function of our rotating coordinate system, it's going to be that x prime is equal to x cosine omega t plus y sine omega t, where omega is the angular velocity. Omega, therefore, has units of 1 over time, such that omega t is in radians and is a valid argument for the cosine and the sine function. 
y prime is going to be equal to minus x sine omega t plus y cosine omega t, and z prime is going to simply be equal to z. Omega, the angular velocity again, is, is 2 pi, the number of radians in a complete rotation, over t, this large t, which would be the period, the time needed to complete the rotation. If we then take time derivatives of x prime, y prime, and t prime, if we take one time derivative, we get the velocity. If we take a second time derivative, we get the acceleration. And this is by the definition of velocity and acceleration. If we use the product rule, the chain rule, then we get these functions. I will go through again just the x prime one here. We get this first function here, which has this 2 omega out in front of it, and it has a dx dt and a dy dt, so these are velocities, and then it has these periodic functions of the rotation. And then we get a second form, which is omega squared, times again x, which will be position, and y, which will be position, and again the sinusoidal functions that are representing the rotation. And we see we have this form of 2 omega times a velocity, omega squared times a position. These two forms we will identify as apparent forces because here's an acceleration that is based upon the rotation of the coordinate system. So in that coordinate system, this is an apparent force. When I learned physics, and even today if you were to go to Wikipedia, you will see these forces sometimes called fictional forces, which I do not think is a good word to describe them because they are in fact apparent and real, and if you were to ignore them you will get incorrect answers either on the test or in your study of meteorology and climate. These apparent forces due to coordinate systems we tend to identify as two types. This one, omega squared times the position, will be identified as the centrifugal force. And this one, which will be omega times essentially a velocity, will be identified as the Coriolis force. Apparent forces. With one coordinate system moving relative to the other, we have the velocity of a particle relative to the coordinate system and the velocity of one coordinate system relative to the other. This velocity of one coordinate system relative to the other leads to these apparent forces. They are real, observable forces to the observer in the moving coordinate system. The apparent forces that are proportional to rotation and the velocities of the inertial coordinate system are called the Coriolis force. The apparent forces that are proportional to the square of the rotation and to the position are called centrifugal forces. I provide a number of resources and videos that offer more insight into the importance of rotational fluid flow. And in fact, we've seen an earlier one when we talked about how dynamics structure the atmosphere. And with that, that is the end of the introduction to the rotating coordinate system.